Right. I've called this meeting to discuss the Australian workplace agreements. We're going to send out a pretty clear message to the unions that we're not going to be strong-armed. And we will remind them that they are entirely responsible for our actions and that we will not submit to their strong-arm tactics in the future. Yeah. Yeah. Right, they've negotiated everything away from us, the bastards. They've bled us dry. And not just from us, but from our co-workers and our co-workers' co-workers. And our co-workers, co-workers, co-workers. Yeah, right. And our co-workers, 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 co-workers. All right. Don't labour the point. <laughs> <laughs> labour, I guess. Shut up. And after all that, what has the union movement ever done for us? Maternity leave? What? Maternity leave. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. They did give us that. Superannuation? Oh, yeah. Do you remember how hard it used to be to be able to retire? Do you remember that, sir? All right, yeah, yeah, OK. Well, maternity leave and superannuation are two things that the unions have done for us. And workers' compensation? Well, obviously workers' compensation. Workers' compensation's a given. You know, it goes without saying. But apart from maternity leave, superannuation and workers' compensation, what has the union movement ever done for us? Medicare? The award system. Occupational health and safety. Paid annual leave. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we never would have got that without the unions, sir. And they certainly drive a hard bargain. No one wants to can do it, really. OK, OK. But apart from maternity leave, and superannuation, workers' compensation, occupational health and safety, paid annual leave, and Medicare, the award system and collective bargaining, what else has the union movement ever given us? Up pay increases. Pay increases? F off. I was one of those people that uh, thought, oh, what does the union do for me? Well, I came to my first AGM, must be 10 years ago now, and I soon found out what a bunch of hard working, hard playing people. I was going to say, I was going to say women, but there are a few men here too, and it's, it was really great. I soon found out what my money went for and then some. We're living in a time of employers um, attacking workers in general, worldwide. Um, workers need to stand together to fight back against austerity, uh, employers taking away bargaining rights, taking away working rights, making workplaces uh, less safe, all those issues that are so important to working people in our quality of life. Some of the biggest risks to the labour movement today is the ongoing attack on workers' rights and union security. And what we're seeing is legislation that was initially created in the United States drift across the border, and that's going to undermine unions and our ability to bring up living standards for everybody in this country. There's a lot of talk now around uh, removing the RAND formula, which is the basic union recognition. And so we're coming into a time unlike any time we've seen since certainly the 1930s, the late 1930s, uh, in terms of attacks on the labor movement. I would like to thank the unions for my freedom, for my education, for my human rights. I'd like to thank the unions because when I was seven years old, I was in a classroom, not a factory. Many children worked 14 hours a day, six days a week, so thank you for the time I had with friends. I worked these endless hours for pennies, so thank you for my childhood. I would like to thank the unions for a minimum wage, for the weekend, for overtime pay, for the right to refuse unsafe work, for parental leave, for workers' compensation, for lunch breaks, vacations, social security, pensions, whistleblower protection laws, privacy rights, and paid vacation. And thank you for my freedom, for my education, and for my human rights. It's a time where young people can't find work, where full-time jobs are vanishing, and the middle class is disappearing. We need you as much as ever. Keep on fighting. I started my career without a union in the United States and there were so many, so many things that were unfair that I, I had to be involved. I don't know where we'd be today without the union. I really don't. People didn't sit back and say, well, you know what, I think it'd be a great idea to uh, give people that are unemployed money so that they can survive. Nobody said, oh, I think I'll do that. Um, Nobody said, I think, you know, it's worth it to give people medical plans or dental plans or to pay them a higher wage just because it's the right thing to do. They did it because of unions. A lot of the workers that are in unions today um, did not build that union. 
They, they, they were not the ones that fought to establish the union in the workplace. They, they inherited the union. Um, and so for that reason, there's a maintenance piece to, that we have to do so they can fully understand why they have the benefits, why they have the working conditions, and why they have the wages they do have, which are all higher and better uh, than w when you work in a non-unionized workplace. Like the unions of the past, they fought to get what we have, and we have to protect that and keep those benefits that we have and keep our pensions where they are, um, because that is a risk in um, a lot of workforces now. Healthcare is not uh, immune to that. There's no question that there's an ideological right that wants to take away those types of programs, take away our health care system, our, our Medicare system, um, that wants to take away our employment insurance system or significantly erode it. Without union voices, th that would happen. Our nurses probably wouldn't have a voice in how things are done. The safety would be overlooked. Unions kind of manage how management treats the workers. I remember working 10 night shifts in a row, not knowing when to go to bed or when to get up. I'd work all three shifts in one pay period and, and there didn't seem to be any um, reasonable schedule and when we approached our management about it, um, they didn't seem to want to talk, or talk to us or whatever so we decided we'd, we'd call the Nova Scotia Nurses Union and see if they could help. It's interesting, people say that uh, unions are irrelevant today or not necessary today, and yet corporations are spending billions of dollars to uh, undermine them and get rid of unions. So clearly someone thinks they're relevant. Unions are more relevant today than I would suggest they've ever been, especially when you look at the attacks that are, are, are going on uh, on every facet of our social fabric in this country. And what you see going on is trying to bring people down to lower wages, less benefits, and the private sector profiting more. This is not about rights, it's not about the right to work, it's about control and it's about taking away your, your right to have benefits and, it, and to undermine the labour movement. I don't believe that unions will go away. I don't believe that union members will allow it to go away. I don't care what the governments and corporations are saying. Unions started because they were being oppressed. I'll press us again and see what happens. We challenge, uh, uh, you know, the governments of the day and, and those that aspire to be government to, to care about uh, the people that need to be cared about in this society, to, to have a fair taxation system, you know, and, and other programs to make sure that uh, health care is funded and stays public and doesn't move to private. Um, and it's about silencing that voice. If we don't have a union, then how are we going to have a voice? We'll just be bulldozed over. We won't have a say in anything. We'll just have to go along with whatever our employer says. We speak for the working nurses, and the employer often will partner with us to, to speak on behalf of the employees, which is, which is a change from when I started with the union movement. When I started with the union movement, the union was a bad thing. We weren't allowed to have meetings in the work site. Now we do. So there has been a shift uh, in healthcare that, that I think is a good thing. Our members are actually our union and we, are the leaders of the union, actually present our views and that's why it's so important for members to become involved and stay involved so that they are accountable and they also direct the union and they have to do that in an appropriate manner. When you're in university they teach you how to be a nurse but they don't teach you about how to be an employee and the important things about your pay stub, what your rights are and also the union just makes you feel supported and involved and like you have a family. Solidarity. Support and security. Fairness. United. Security. Togetherness there, that's a good word. Power. Mm. Protectionism. Unity. Strength. Important. Powerful. Protection. Support. And insurance on your job. Professionalism. It's members. Strength. Hope. Workplace satisfaction. Camaraderie. Numbers. Fairness. Equality. Family. Leadership. Collaboration. Collaborative. Because it takes everybody's opinions to try to achieve a common goal to make life better for the nurses and better for the patients.
Yo, I've been hearing a lot of trash talk about unions Saying these ain't the friends to be choosing Out for themselves, not for others You might have heard unions ain't good for your health, brother Well, let me spit it for you, got something to say It's because of unions, we gotta aid our workday This ain't no commercial break, my friend Unions are the peeps who brought you the weekend Probably never think about it, la di da -di. Unions fought hard for your right to party they're out there to ease your tension With decent wages, health care, and pensions Now it's like unions blamed for bad weather But tell me what's wrong with solidarity forever I wanna shout it on high, get it off my chest The story here is fighting for those who have less So when unions are bad guys in the propaganda war Think what they done, where they stand, who they fight for